Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Detroit Sports Sit Down. My name is Tom Murphy Jr. I'm here with Dan Murphy and Joe Perry. And fellas, it is a glorious day. The Lions victorious, 35-23. I never had a doubt, even when uh, guys were uh, taking the ball out of the end zone when they shouldn't have been, and things were falling apart. I, like just, it, like, you know, I, I didn't. I don't think once I screamed same old Lions six times in the fourth in the first quarter. We got the win. A win is a win is a win. You guys, it's Monday night. It's the first week of NFL football and it did not disappoint. A lot of good games. Um a lot of things got sorted out, not just with the Lions, but across the league. A lot of surprising things happened. Who knew the Rams knew how to play football? Um nobody was in that game live to see it, so you know if, if a fan's not there to see it, does it really happen? Indy, Indy sucks though. So. Yeah, <laughs> Indy's bad, but a lot of surprises, a lot of things going on. Um, the Jaguars, wow, you know their defense looked good. They sure did. A lot of stuff, a lot of stuff happening, but we're gonna talk about our Detroit Lions, and boy, oh boy, that first quarter was atrocious. It was, it was. Some of the mistakes you were seeing, some of the things I I was I was I was upset. I was having a hard time. I wanted to go home. I wanted to just quit watching football for the whole season. And then, uh, fellas, I don't. What do you think? I mean, things change. What the defense held, and then I mean, like what what changed? I think uh, we got a lot of pressure. Um, I think our defensive line looked a lot better than I thought. I don't know if it was just Arizona's line was that bad because I figured they'd be uh, bad this year. Um, but we definitely got a lot more pressure, which made Carson Palmer have to get rid of the ball faster. than We only had one sack, which surprised me, but I feel like we did have a lot of pressure the whole game, um, more so in the second half. Yeah. But uh, I think that was one thing that really surprised me, how much pressure we got. And even when the Lions were struggling uh, throughout that first quarter, the defense was playing phenomenal football. Um, they really didn't give out, give up, you know, a touchdown drive, a real scoring drive until the second half. Um, they they kept, they kept the Lions in it, and especially when uh, Redfern, the Lions punter, bobbled that snap. Second string oh, punter, yeah. that kid, he's got to know though. Like, come on, take the safety or get rid of the ball. Don't. Take it out of the end zone and go try to take yeah. on an NFL linebacker. You know, these guys special teams they're headhunters, and when they see you run out of the back of the end zone, they're coming with all their fury. And he he got the worst of it. He's he out towards <laughs> pretty much towards whole knee up or you know MCL yeah. ACL. Like oh man, but you you got it. Got to kick on. it. He had an you opportunity to at least do it, try to rug, rugby kick it and get it out of the end zone. And at, at worse, and Dwayne Washington worst, take a safety. Yeah, know? yeah. Like, don't set your team up for failure. And then Dwayne Washington letting the ball roll into him into the end zone, and then like Fair nine yards deeper, yeah. then taking it out to the five. It, it, it's as if he didn't realize that he could take a knee. <laughs> Yeah, you got to know that as an NFL I, it's player. Almost, I think he kind of freaked out because he, when he grabbed it, he kind of bobbled and then stepped back. And it's almost like he wasn't sure if he had stepped past the goal line, which he wasn't close. But yeah. it's almost like he wasn't quite sure. So he's like, ah, crap, I better take it out. Mm-hmm. And he got to, oh, only to the five. Yeah, I don't know. That's your job. You got to know. Yeah. You got to know the situation. Well, he, no I guess uh, that's the way I look at. We're it. gonna see some different kick returners. Well, Agnew uh, took over. Yeah. you know, after that, so and he uh, he yeah. did a decent job. Washington, I think um, he lost his job on that one, man. How about uh, Stafford though? After that first pass, I had my hockey team text someone's like, "Oh, highest paid player." Oh, I oh, see all over. Uh, all Stephen over A. Smith media. chimed in, man. <laughs> like, you know, like. like Tweeting, can't be seeing the highest paid player in the uh, NFL throwing pick sixes, and I agreed with him. I'm like, really? I know. Like, it's like, I, it was like you get all you get all excited because Palmer throws the the, the pick, you know, like first drive lines interception. I know. So you're yeah. like, yeah, this is how you start a game. Let's go. Yeah. You don't even get a chance to like like catch your breath and then yeah. all pick six. I know. That was crazy. But what did you Here guys think go. about that pick six? Because Golden Tate was coming across. Coming across the middle, and he got hit. Yeah. But they said it was within five yards. But the question is, was the ball in the air or it wasn't? Because if the ball was in the air, 
then it should have been pass interference. I was close. Yeah. It was, was really close. But close. That, I mean, Stafford can't, you know, wasn't expecting to go and take to get drilled no, right. over the middle before, yeah. you know, the passes. You know, still. you know, those are timing. Those are timing yeah, things exactly. too. You know, but well, it's just it wasn't actually his fault. You know, but just because he's the highest paid you know, player, and it goes out his shoulders. Yeah, exactly. You know, and it, that's that's. You know, you just want to show. Oh, here we go, same old line. You yeah, know, they, know. They get so us Lions fans were so were so quick with it because, <laughs> We've and seen I, it so I long. like I was guilty of it, man. That first quarter, I would, I was, I was just distraught, and I'm like, I cannot do this all year. <laughs> you know, I cannot put up with this all year, man. Yeah, I mean, especially after Tigers and but it was it was sloppy it. football all over the league. Yeah, especially the first day. Maybe they need more preseason games. Maybe we should play yeah. six preseason <laughs> games. No. <laughs> maybe if we played less, if you, I don't, maybe they're. You're so used to going through the motions, and your team is practicing for six weeks, and they, but you're not playing. You're playing one quarter, you know, a game, and then all of a sudden it's it's, it's time to go, time to go, uh-huh. and people are rusty, especially. And, and you saw that across the league where defense is defense reigned yeah. this week, man. They, like the teams. That really stood out. Their defenses were flying around, and, and the offense, like it was lackluster offenses, and, and it was more of a game management type sit- situation across the league where the defenses really stood out for me. And the Lions, their defense was one of those defenses that did stand out. And you really look at Arizona though, and it's like, you know, we were at the game when they came in. Was it two years ago? And just smoked us. It, it's practically the same roster with those yeah, guys. The oldest roster in the league. Uh, they were saying, and I think it, you know it, it showed with those guys. Um, Arizona. I I don't think they're. You can't judge a whole team off yeah. of, off of one week, but I mean, they kind of looked. They looked. Uh, oh yeah. Like they looked a part of having the the oldest roster. In, in 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 the league, and but I think the Lions uh, t- they took advantage of that, and the the defense was flying around, big plays. You know, speaking of old, I think Carson Palmer's a little old. I think he's done. I, I said it when we pretty, yeah, I said it when much. we went through our picks yep. you know, for the first one. I said you know, I, I thought they Carson would jump Palmer's back done. this year. I really did. I thought uh, they'd be a little bit better this year than they were last year. But it looks like they might be on a little decline and yeah. be the team they were last year, or even. Worse and and well, especially that, with David, you know, well, yeah, running back Johnson David Johnson out. hurting his wrist. Mm-hmm. That I guess he's got a sprained him. wrist. Or it's it, it's kind of up in the air right now, but they're looking at uh, extended time. You know, that's that hurts not only Arizona, that hurts a lot of people that were real excited about that first draft pick <laughs> in, their, in their fantasy. League. I'm glad I didn't take him. Oh yeah, yeah, you made the smart choice, man. Well, it's not Le'Veon smart Bell yet. instead of David Johnson. It's not smart yet. Well, it's early. Well, yeah, first we'll week, see. just like the Lions. Yeah, first week. First week. Don't, now, we got a highlight, I guess, because one of my favorite parts of the game yesterday was the emergence of Kenny Galladay. We uh, we had some fun with him a bit because he uh, he had that you know a great start to his preseason that maybe kind of disappeared a bit. Um, you know, we're like, oh, it's over. He's a bust. You know. Sh- Joking around, uh, but I think he um, he had some pretty nice plays, and he looks he looks like he belongs out there, and he looked he may be a steal from a you know as a third round pick. Um, if, if things keep going the way they they looked yesterday, then uh, there's going to be a lot of teams kicking themselves for not 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 snatching him up a little earlier than what mid third rounds. So, I think so, I think it was late third round. The, yeah. the Lions actually traded up to get him. And a lot of times it's like, oh, man, they, they traded up. They could have got Kareem Hunt, you know, from Kansas City. But Galladay looks cool. like he could be a star, too. So Yeah, they both played good. Yeah, Hunt, Hunt, God, he became a star on national yeah. TV Thursday night. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I mean, either one, I don't know. Would you rather have Kareem it's Hunt early. or would you rather have Galladay? I guess uh, – well, time will tell. I'll tell you in, yeah, I'll tell you in uh, six weeks at least. <laughs> yeah. Give him six weeks, all right? Not one game. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> six, you know, six least, year, yeah, it could be six years. Well, yeah, yeah, right. too, at but, least six weeks. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, I mean, they both look great. Uh, we, we got this highlight. We want to play it. It, I, it was definitely the highlight of the day for the Lions. Uh, this is Stafford. Like, going back to his glory days where he used to just chuck it up and have that uh, – 
Have that big 81 up, up there, man. He, I, I wonder if he had a little flashback at uh, Stanford himself when uh, when he threw this yeah. ball because uh kind of reminded you of somebody. Yeah, for and sure. And this was against Patrick Peterson as well. Yeah, yeah. Which makes it even better. One of the, yeah, one of the best to – one of the best cornerbacks in the game right now. So here it is. This is uh this is Gallad this is Stafford to Galladay. Stafford up under center, single back is Amir. Matthews got it, fakes to give to Amir, sets deep in the pocket, wants to throw, does deep downfield, wants Galladay inside the ten. Guys, did he make the catch? Oh he did! Oh rookie, you are something special! Touchdown Detroit Lions! Oh, 45 yards on the connection! Holy smoke, he laid out to make the catch. That is something else. And you Golden got... Tate just got down on his hands and knees and did a we're hosanna. Not we're, we're not, not worthy. worthy to Kenny Galladay. Oh, you got to love You got to love Dan Miller and big Jim Brand Center, the Lions. Uh, a little bit better than those play Colts play announcers guys. from the uh, first preseason <laughs> yeah. game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, a lot better. Did you hear that crowd in the background too, man? The fourth field was jumping. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think there was a lot of paranoid, angry people in the first quarter, but by the end of the game, it's a lot of happy Lions fans filing out of uh, Ford Field, and for good reason. Um, I, I, it's week one, but look, half the league lost this week, and we're not one of them, so <laughs> it's a good day. It, it, it's a good day to be a Lions fan. Um, now we get to go on to New York next Monday, a week from tonight, uh, to play the Giants, who just pretty much got spanked by the Dallas Cowboys last night. Um, de- the, the Giants' defense does look good, you know. Uh, the offense looks atrocious, but they didn't have Beckham. Uh, may or may not play next week. I think that's still kind of they've been up in the air. about it, yeah. So, uh, so that's something we're gonna have to prepare for. But what do you guys think? Um, is this team is is there is it smoke and mirrors? Is, is Arizona just not that good? Uh, or are we gonna be a- able to clean up some of the the mistakes from the first half and then going on um, Monday night and beat those Giants. Well, that's still a concern that they, they'd not be able to run the ball. Um, that's Abdul, Abdul that's 15, my top concern. You're yeah, going to clean up those those special teams mistakes. Yeah, hopefully. those, and especially they're going to get a new punter. and that, That's going to take care of itself, I think. But And they already replaced uh, Washington as returner throughout yeah. the game. That they will but, yeah, the lack it, so. of a running game is worse. Yeah, that always hurts. Abdul, especially 15 on the road. carries for 30 yards, two-yard average, that, that's not going to cut it, man. Oh, no. And they had only 82 total yards, but 48 of them were for Stafford. So it's like you're not really running the ball. And against the Gi- I mean, the Giants are a hard team to run against. You're probably going to have to throw against them anyway. But you're playing outside on the road, and you really do need to run the ball. Um, I'm always a big fan of that, run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. And it just opens up so much. It opens up the passing game. So it is going to be a tough game. Um, for sure, I did pick them to lose, but I also picked them to lose against Arizona. So, <laughs> so we're looking good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, they also surprised me. The Giants, they looked pretty awful. Like I, I thought they would be well more prepared. I, I, I did not think uh, Dallas's defense was going to be that that good. Um, is it that uh, the Giants' offense is that bad without Beckham? I mean, obviously he's a star. He's a huge part of their offense, but I didn't know he was 100% of the offense. Well, they don't have, they've never had a running game either. They're the same as the Lions. They're a throw-first team, throw-throw. They can't run. So, yeah, I'm not sure if they're going to be able to run the ball either. It's just going to probably be a pass kind of game anyways. And if they can get, you know, same thing, get pressure on Eli, not give him any time like they did on Carson Palmer, then that's a chance where they can win. Yep. And I really, I've, I'm really excited to see some of our guys like in New York on Monday Night Football. Um, you're going in against a team that it looks like if you play well, you can beat them. It's going to be a lot of fun to see how Stafford responds. Um, I'm a little bit worried about Golden Tate. I mean, he he had a great game 
but he looked hurt. Like he looked miserable <laughs> like the whole game, didn't he? Like, yeah, I, I, don't yeah, know I think his he, bags hurt. It looked like he busted up his well, finger. I think he busted up his finger, yeah, his finger on yeah. one of uh, Stafford's seeing. throws. Mm-hmm. He, oh, yeah. he jammed his finger pretty good. I, hopefully, it's not broken. It, it may be sprain or something like that. But he was definitely hurt throughout that game. Yeah, and I think if um, if we're going to be successful this year, Golden Tate has to be successful. I really believe that because if you take him him, him away, you, you know it's going to make it a lot tougher on, you know, guys like Galladay and Marvin Jones. And and we talked about it too. You know, having Galladay step up and be that receiver on the outside. You have Marvin Jones on the other side. It allows Golden Tate to move around and play more in the slot. And he saw he was more of a possession receiver. And in this he, game, ten so catches, shit, hundred yards. Yeah. yeah, he catches those hard balls so, in yeah. the middle. Ten Which, yards a catch. You know, seven eight yards. And th- those are things you need when you're you like the. It's the difference between sustaining drives and killing drives is, you know, ha- having a guy who can go in the middle, make those tough seven, eight-yard catches because it, it's crucial. Um, but you get beat up doing that, and um, he looked he, he looked hurt. Uh, so let's hope he um, heals up, you know, got an extra day of healing. So, you know, with the Monday night game, so hopefully uh, – you know that helps him, and let you know. Let's keep that going because he he looks like a huge part of that, of of that uh, the offense in the fourth quarter. You know, yeah, he gets a lot of yards after the catch too, so yeah. that helps um, getting the ball off quick, getting those extra yards. So yeah, he's a major part of our offense. So hopefully he's not banged up already after week one. So um, I mean I think uh, Greg Robinson. A big story was uh, how would the line hold up? Now, obviously, the running game was not looking well. But, I mean, Stanford, he wasn't running for, for his life all day. So, I, I guess on that respect, I, I, I think um, I think he held up. The offensive line looked decent. You know, I wouldn't give him an A-plus gold, you know, five gold stars or nothing. But because their holes just weren't there, like, Abdullah just – there was no space for him to run, and that, that's concerning. Mm-hmm. Um, hopefully that's something that can just progress. But, uh, I mean, it's just it's been a problem for the Lions for so long, you know, that, that to see him not be able to, to run again, uh, it's concerning. Stafford was not, you know, getting face planted all day. He wasn't running for his life, and, you know, he had the time to – pick his receivers and, and, and make some good throws and um, the whole team all together got the job done got the win and we're 1-0 and so I mean that you know and that's at this point really that's what matters you got the win you got the home the home opener you know so let's go out there Monday night and see what happens I guess I mean I I one like, thing I, I, kinda, I mean, are, are you are you super excited now? <laughs> like, are are you or, or is it like? Well, I mean, there's a lot of things to there's still a lot clean to up, me, but a lot of, there's still a lot of football left. It's just one game, and I don't think Arizona was as good as as I am more excited than I was at the beginning of the year, to tell you the truth. But I'm still not as excited as probably you, just because I don't think Arizona by watching them were as good as I thought. Um, I do think the Lions were better than I thought, so. So I am excited about that. But one thing I've really noticed about Stafford is he looks like he has more time, but a lot of it is because he creates his own. Like, he gets out of the way. He's been moving out of the pocket like Rodgers. Yeah. And I think, I've noticed he's been doing that more uh, starting, like, la- the end of last year or last year to this year. And I've noticed that he's been moving better around the pocket, which makes our offensive linemen yeah. look better. You know I mean, what I'm nobody's going to mistake him for – you know, Mike Vick or Cam Newton or, you know, but he, he can, um, he, like you say, he can maneuver. And he's, he, he had one real nice run where it just kind of, you know, dodged the tackle and then split right up the middle, got a hard nose first down. And that's the type of stuff you need. And Stanford can do that. You know, he, yeah, um, he's been showing that. Yeah. He's got enough athletic ability to to maneuver when he has to and that's that's important because when things open up like that and you can go get that first down on on a third and eight third and nine that's huge you know and um 
it, yeah, I think he's got that in his uh, in his arsenal. Yeah, he's developed that for sure. And I think one thing, kind of going into next week, you know, t- teams obviously going to see, especially the Giants next week, are going to see Galladay, you know, make that forty-five yard touchdown. They're, they're going to work to try to take that away. They're going to try to take out the outs- take away the outside receivers. And, and I think what you're going to start seeing, especially if the Lions aren't able to run the ball, you're going to start seeing more Riddick out of the backfield. Um, yeah. He he got only seven targets. He made six six catches. I think you're going to see more of that. You know, maybe nine, ten catches next week. Um, Riddick and even Abdullah as well, getting out of the backfield and catching the ball out of the backfield and making things happen that way. Um, especially if they start taking the outside away. Um, and that's where Ebron's going to have to come in too. Ebron has to step up too because <laughs> he didn't. He he, he kind of disappeared in that game as well. Yeah, he had uh, what two catches for like ten yards or something. He had at least one good first down. He had I, two I know, catches yeah. for nine yards. But I, I would say those are the two guys that are going to really show up more next week. You're going to see is Riddick and, and Ebron. I would agree. How about our middle linebacker? He looked better. He, he looked, looked better. a lot better. I mean, he he um. I I said uh, I was a little bit nervous after that Patriots game. Uh, you know, week three really of the nervous. preseason, but <laughs> I said, man, I I really believe this is the type of guy the type of player that that's going to take that study it learn from it and um i obviously he did he yeah. i think th- i think this guy's just going to go to work every day and uh i jerry davis he he played well and he, he's anchoring this defense you know he he played like a vet he didn't he didn't make mistakes you know like nothing glaring and you know and uh when your defense is solid, it has a lot to do with the middle linebacker. If your middle linebacker is not controlling things, you know things can go haywire. And uh, it 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 didn't. And uh, our defensive line, I mean, there's pressure. We got guys. There's talent up there. Uh, like getting after the quarterback was a big concern. Like 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 you said, Joe, we didn't get too many sacks, but but there was a lot of pressure. Um, and I think you're going to see a lot more uh, getting after the quarterback. I like Anthony Zettel. Mm-hmm. He he uh, he looks like he's going to be a player. Ashawn Robinson, Ziggy Ansah looks healthy. You know, he, what do you think, Dan? Are you um, are you uh, online with uh, with this defense or? Do you think that Arizona's offense just wasn't that great? I think it's a little bit both. But I, I was ex- really excited about the defense, and especially, you know, we, we kind of touched on it. But after that that punt, that bobble punt, and they ran it to the 10, the Lions got a three and out, and then they had a special teams penalty that gave them a first down, first and goal from the four. Then they got another three and out right after that. Yeah. I mean, that was to me, that was a huge game changer because if Arizona jumps in and scores a touchdown right there, you're thinking, oh man, you know, Arizona certainly might be able to get on a run after that. But the defense stepped up, and that kind of changed the momentum of the game right there. And they continued throughout the game to step up in big opportunities and get big turnovers when they needed them. And those are the things they're going to have to do throughout the season. You know, make big plays when the opportunities are there, and they did. But I still, I picked, I picked the Lions to win this game. I thought Carson Palmer's done, he, and he looked terrible. Yeah, he was. So he's I, done. I, it didn't. It doesn't really change how I view the season. It, the game kind of went how I thought it was going to go. Um, you know, a few different things here. I didn't think they would be that atrocious on special teams in the first half. But for the most part, the game went how I thought it would go. Now we go into next week, and we'll see what happens. It, it, I don't see them beating the Giants, but if Beckham doesn't play, we saw what the Giants' offense could do, and it wasn't a whole heck of a lot. You know, But they're going to be at home this week. You know, They're going to be you know kind of desperate. They don't want to start 0-2, obviously. And, and they're going to be at home on Monday Night Football. They're going to be ready to go. So I, I don't see the Lions going in there and winning this one. But if they do, then it's time to start really getting excited for about this football team. Yeah. Now, looking at the whole d- division now that we've seen each team in our NFC North play a game, uh, Green Bay looks strong, like strong, tight, defensive battle in Lambeau against Seattle, who it's – did not look good on offense, but you know Seattle will be there come playoff time. They'll they'll be in or around, um, just like they always are. They're still good. That was a good football game, but it was, it was a hard fought defensive battle. But Green Bay comes out just to win tonight. Uh, Minnesota looked real good against New Orleans, who was 
never known to have a good defense, but their offense got shut down. Minnesota played a, a complete football game tonight, and Bradford looked like he had, he had some weapons with, you know, Dalvin Cook, and the at, at you know rookie running back, but uh, you know, uh, wide receivers Diggs and Thielen. I mean, they were playmakers tonight too, and then he's got the tight end Kyle Rudolph. Uh, Bradford not known for his durability, so we'll see you know if he lasts. Because if he gets hurt, then there's really nowhere to go for Minnesota. But uh, Minnesota look good. And then Chicago, uh, I think we know what Chicago is going to be. Probably not that great, but they held strong against Atlanta. They gave Atlanta a scare at home. You know. They look better than I thought, too. Yeah, Chicago pretty look good. All the so. teams look better than I thought. Yeah, so does that concern you guys a bit, or do you think the Lions are – do you think the Lions looked – in week one, do you think the Lions looked the best, or are we – did I, – I mean, Minnesota and Green Bay looks like they're going to be some tough competition. Where do you think we're at in this division after week one? I don't know. I, like I said, I thought Green Bay's defense was a lot better than I thought, so that scares me a little bit If because I normally always thought their defense was pretty weak, but they looked solid against uh, um, Seattle because they normally have a pretty good offense. I know their offensive line isn't the best. Um, and I didn't watch the Minnesota game, but I know that they pretty much dominated New Orleans, and uh, they're a good offense, but they're the same defense. Isn't that great? Um so that it makes me a little bit nervous. Even the Bears playing Atlanta tough makes me a little nervous, to tell you the truth, because I didn't expect the Bears even to come close in that game. And Minnesota, I kind of thought New Orleans would win. So it does make me a little nervous after week one. Yeah, Minnesota and Chicago looked better than I thought they would. But I, I'd still put the Lions right where I put them before the season. That's right at second, just a step below Green Bay. Um, I still think Green Bay is the top until, until they show otherwise. And that defense showed up. So we'll see. I mean, it's only week one. I mean, th- things will change. We'll see. We'll see as we get along in the season. But right now, I think the Lions are still kind of right where I thought they were, be right in the second spot and just a notch below Green Bay. Yeah. Any other big surprises for you? I tell you, um, the Rams were a huge surprise for me. The, the Colts, yeah, they look really bad going out on, on the West Coast, and we joked about like. There, like there was literally, it seemed like there was nobody in those stands. It was pretty embarrassing. <laughs> like you wonder why these guys, why? And why you got two there? teams that moved out to LA that ne- that neither of these teams are going to get watched. I, it, I'm not. I, it, it doesn't really make sense to me. Uh, but so be it. But if, if the Rams keep playing like they did um, yesterday, then yeah, there's going to be some people showing up to those games because they looked real good. They've always had a solid defense, but. Their offense has always been questionable, but yeah. now that they got a quarterback, they think with golf, then yeah. I think uh, girl, girl is a girl, solid running back. Yeah, bad. he's he's solid. You know, they got Sammy Watkins over there too. If he yeah. can stay, uh, that was a nice pickup. Injury free, you know. Uh-huh. They, they, we'll see. And he then they got a rookie wide receiver. Um, I can't remember his name. But I don't know. They got a good rookie wide receiver. Uh, so yeah, their offense got a little better. Yeah. Um, and their defense has always been good. But the, but the biggest surprise of the whole week was the Patriots. Oh, yeah, Kansas oh, for sure. Giving up over 500 yards to Kansas City. Yeah, oh. that's true. I did take Kansas City, but, I, you know, I really like those yeah. nine points. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you didn't need them, though, because Kansas City came out a whoop. Yeah. Whoop to the really Patriots. Good. Holy smokes. Uh, yeah, the Patriots, they did not look ready, man. I mean, and, and it was all in the second half, too, when – the Patriots usually are at their best. I mean, Alex Smith looked like yeah, he was, God, he was dropping him in, yeah. he had a touch on it. Yeah, I was. I was. They got, so they got weapons over there in Kansas City too. I, I mean, I think they. I like the Raiders, uh, but man, I like after after what I saw that first game. Um, I like the I like Kansas City to to take the AFC. Mm-hmm. You know, I was leaning towards them anyway. Um, take the whole AFC or just the AFC East. Or, or the whole the AFC, season. like Super Bowl, I think. I, yeah, I, I like Atlanta. I think I like Atlanta to go back in the a- NFC, and uh, I think I like K- KC. Man, I mean, 
I don't know who I don't have to pick a Super Bowl winner yet, and no. and and I can I can change this too because next week uh, Kansas City could get smoked. Exactly. And, That's right. Well, still, these guys aren't nearly as good as I really thought they were going to be. Still, but, only week one. I know, but it is. But yeah. they look good. No, they, 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 they look. They look like they, they did look. Good. And when you go into that environment, raising the Super Bowl banner and all the hoopla. <laughs> First game of the season, and it's Thursday night. It's not even a traditional Sunday game, you know. Like, and they just came in there and and just went to town on those guys, man. And I, it, and then Patriots, they do they they, they look uh, they look shell shocked, but I think they'll come right back, you know. Yeah, it's the Patriots. They'll come yeah, back. no, they'll be right there. They're not going to be like seven and nine or nothing, you know. They'll be just fine. Yeah, at least, like they said, at least they lost a the game, so they're not undefeated, right? They have to answer those questions. <laughs> <laughs> so they got they got their first loss out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> I heard somebody say that. What else surprised you? Um, the Browns are still the Browns. Uh, yeah, but uh, I saw someone on TV talking about it, and I kind of know this as the Browns played Pittsburgh good, right? So that's yeah. like a win for them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's yeah. saying uh, it's a moral yeah, it's victory. Like, it's like a win because. You didn't lose by a lot. They did get They blown looked out. good yeah. against Pittsburgh, so yeah. it's, it's almost a win for the, the Browns. <laughs> uh, I like Philly. I liked what Philly did uh, at Washington. It's a huge uh, road division win. You know, the, the, that at NFC East is going to be fun to watch all year. I think it's going to be very good. I think all four of those teams are going to be battling it out all season, and uh, that's a big first win for Philly out there in what Car- Carson Wentz. Uh, yeah, know. he's a – I think someone that's going to be good this year. Yeah, Wentz. I uh, he looked good the first game, and I think he's going to step up and be a, a decent quarterback. I think another issue to touch on too is the Ezekiel Elliott being able to play in the first game. It looks I mean, like he's going to be able to play all season. Um, I mean, I, I, I've I, heard mixed reports. It, it, well, it's it's all in in the courts now, man. It's going to be uh, it's going to be interesting to watch. I think it's going to play out like how well uh, Brady's situated. This thing might go all the way up, man. A, like one side wins and they appeal, the other side wins, they appeal, and it's just going to keep going up and up. And who, like, as far as as far as it can go, it might. I mean, it might even get to the Supreme Court. No. I, I, it's, it's such a waste of time. It I'm is, so but pissed about I mean, all this. it's so dumb. It's football. They should be wasting time in our. Everybody system. involved is is, is gonna, I know, it's, it's going to get so it's going to get higher and higher up, and, and it's going to be more powers that be, and there's it's so much, there's so the much money time. involved, and and then you're getting all these issues with the NFL and domestic violence, and and then players' rights, and and it, 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 this thing could drag, drag. It's going to. It's drag. going to drag on, but that's why I said it's so dumb. It's it's. It's, not, it's a waste I mean, of time. It, it, it is. Football. It is what it is. Because like, like, you can't. Because like, there's so many different arguments here. I mean, the first one is: is there enough evidence that that he struck a female? And if so, he should be arrested, let alone suspended. Mm-hmm. And then it well, just goes further. Than, and then that, and, and then you get into criminal versus uh, the NFL's player conduct policy, and and that. NFL doing their own investigations, which Goodell and, and his team of buffoons have fumbled along the whole way, which they seem to always do with these types of things. Um, but it's their league. Yeah. It's their league. Well, Why can't well, they big, suspend The big somebody? problem is you don't have an unbiased arbitrator to go to, to go to read the appeals. So when a player appeals, you yeah, don't have some. You don't like in baseball when they appeal. You have somebody you know that's outside of the game as an arbitrator to look at it, and then they decide you know whether to bring the games down or keep the suspension as it is. Yeah. And it's just cut and dry, and that's it. You know. But in football, the, you're going through, you're going through the courts. It's Goodell's. You know. You know. Yeah. You judge, like, jury, and execution, yeah, that's, yeah, and, and that's it. And then you and then you go through the courts above him, and then it just keeps going and going and going, and it's never settled. And like yeah. Tom Brady, it took a whole year. Mm-hmm. He had the suspension; it got appealed. He went the whole year. Was he going to get suspended? Is he not? He doesn't get suspended the whole year. You think, okay, it's done with, yeah. and then all of a sudden he starts the next season. He's suspended for four games. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's ridiculous. I just don't see why it's their league. They can't just say, "Hey, well, we have this investigation, and that's is our, what we believe," and then. I know it's a lot of money they're losing. It's tons of money, actually. But it comes into like workers' rights laws and does stuff it? Yeah. like that. Like I mean, that that's when it starts getting into the court system. It's mm-hmm. the legality of keeping him out from 
you know, from making money. From, yeah. But, but this falls on the NFLPA for agreeing to. I don't understand how they could ever do that. It just seems so asinine to me that they would give him so much power. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that's that's where it falls on. It falls. They I mean they agreed to this bargaining agreement. Yeah. So at that point, it it, it shouldn't really go to this level. It should it, you know it should be kind of cut and dry. This the suspensions. Six games, it should be six games. That's what they agreed to. Yeah. Well, it all comes down to money, right? So why, why don't they just suspend them and say, hey, you can't play, but you get your money? Well, Jerry Jones ain't having that. Yeah. Jerry Jones <laughs> is paying this man a lot of money. <laughs> he wants him out there. He ain't going to just pay him to sit out the sidelines for something he did in well, he was. Well, I, he wasn't still that Ohio State. You don't either. think Jerry Jones has enough money? Well, then you're getting oh. some really sketchy stuff, man. Yeah. If you just tell your girl, "Hey, hey, make it up that that I hit you," and then I'll get suspended for six games, and I don't have to get hit. We'll get I can get, still get paid. Yeah. <laughs> we'll still get paid at that if we're, if we're still in playoff contention. Then I'll just play the last ten games, and yeah, they can go oh, on a nice man. long vacation with yeah. all that yeah. money. Six <laughs> weeks, get paid, don't have to get hit, don't have to take any of the hits. <laughs> And it's you wonder about that though with these guys holding out in um, different contracts situations. It is money, but a lot of time, I mean, to get to that level, you really have to have heart. You have to love the game of football, um, because you can't put in that much work day in day out if you don't really love the game and love playing. Like if if you're sitting on the sidelines watching your team. That hurts. It, it 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 sucks, man. Like there's nothing worse than like not being able to compete for an athlete. Like athletes are born to compete. It's in their nature. Yeah. Um, but there is a lot to be said for the fact that the NFL is a business and once you get when you get to that level you do have to weigh those these different options and you know, like you're looking out for your career as opposed to just trying to win this one game. You know, you're trying to get your money, you're trying to get paid, and especially when it comes to these running backs, you know, Le- Le'Veon Bell with his, um, you know, he held out. He knew he was going to get franchise tag. He must have known that they weren't going to sign him to a long-term deal, which may or may not be foolish on, on, on Pittsburgh's part, but they, they, they gave him their franchise tag, and he didn't have to sign. But, he you know, he signed it. He came in. You know, he was training on his own, and that's less wear and tear on his body. And when it comes to these running backs, you know, it is a short fuse for these guys. So I don't see um, why Le'Veon Bell wouldn't hold out all season. But... He may he didn't have a spectacular day. Um, he he may have had some rust. He may have uh, some teammates that are a little upset that they had to go through all these camps and go through the the heat, you know, and the the long practices all summer while he's out doing whatever he's doing. But at the same time, it's a business, so you gotta you gotta respect it, I guess. But I mean, you you've always had hold. People have been holding out. Holding out is nothing new. Mm-hmm. You know, um, so and guys, that's the first thing guys guys will say. You know, when they're politically correct, is uh, you know, we love the guy. We're glad he's his teammate. Uh, we, we respect his uh, just decisions. It, it, you know, it, it this is a business. You got to look out for yourself. But at the same time, they're like, man, you're sitting at home and, and we're here, and then you just show up when it's time time to start, start the season, man. and you're just right in there. So. There's there, those are some some of the things that are issues with football and I guess sports in general that um, may never really be resolved. There's never going to be a perfect situation, you know, like for these guys. You work your butt off to get there, and you got when you get that opportunity, you gotta you gotta get as much out of it as you can because you know the NFL they will chew you up and spit you out, and once you're once you're done gone with you your contract's not even guaranteed you know yeah they can just cut you whenever they want yeah it is yeah it's so cutthroat so you so you can't be you like oh this guy he, he should just play he should just play for his team and then blows out plays for his team blows out his knee oh well next man up you yeah. know see ya it, 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 it can't work both ways like that you know but it, I, I think a lot of people 
would like to look past all that and just root, root for their team, you know. For sure. But it's a business, man. Not to maybe not to the fans, but to everybody that's involved. It's 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 money first. But I mean that's the NFL man, it, it it was it was a fun week one. Um it's probably like week two is gonna be even more exciting, I think, because it's gonna come a lot but we waited what, six months <laughs> for week oh, one to, yeah. to happen. I swear preseason feels like it's three months long. But it was here and week two's coming up real fast. So, you know, you got a game Thursday already. I don't know if it's going to be watchable. Houston and Cincinnati, those are two teams that oh, look terrible. It's going to be like 0-0 game. Yeah. Just all turnovers. Yeah. Maybe a defensive touchdown in there. Yeah, defensive battles. Um, anything else you guys want, want to touch on before we wrap up our NFL segment? I, I throw something out there. I, I post on the, you know, our Facebook page. There's somebody put a meme out there about Stafford. You know, where are the haters now? You know, yeah. Four touchdowns and you know close to three hundred yards and you know leading another comeback and, and a lot of people are commenting on it like yeah well yeah we're still haters you know we, he hasn't what has he won you know he doesn't deserve to be the highest paid player in the NFL and this and that and you know just saying you know basically he doesn't deserve the contract and you look at a team like Houston you know like they, how long have they gone had this great team and not had that quarterback to take them anywhere. You know, you could right, you could yeah. say, yeah, well, we won't. You could not not spend the money on Stafford and build a team around. You know, get get somebody else, just get an average quarterback and build a team, and build a really nice team. Like, well, then you, J. Can J. White, the, you can build the a defense around J.J. Watt, and he's great. And that defense has been good for for years now. But and they've had great running backs and great running attacks. They've had yep. big time receivers, Andre Johnson, now DeAndre Hopkins. Yeah. Awesome what, defenses, it, just incredible defenses, yeah. top five yeah. defenses for yeah. many years. Oh, and yeah. what did they do? Oh, you're right. Really nothing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they point. won a couple playoff games here and there, a couple divisions, but really, I mean, yeah, there's Trump, nothing you're really was good, right? <laughs> he took him to the playoffs, yeah. but no, he was never. never I mean, they did, I, and there, there, there are some playoff wins. I mean, they've done more than the Lions have, mm-hmm. but it looks like there's a ceiling. Like I, I see what you're saying. There's a ceiling with that. Where with, with the Lions, if if all the pieces get put together, that ceiling I think is a lot higher when you have. A quarterback that can that's get you there. That's a good way of putting it. But here it is, though. I mean, this is this is it. I, that's why the Stanford haters are out there because you had what has he won? Because what has he won? There. But you're paying for what you think he's going to do in the future. Well, they better pan out. It better pan out. But I mean, you got <laughs> six years. To, we'll see what yeah. happens. I game one is pretty good indication that. So that what happens if the Lions do win a, a division and win up a, a playoff game? That, then. It, what style is better, but you don't win a Super Bowl because you, you look at Houston right now. We should be striving to be what Houston has done in the past few years because, like you said, they have won a couple of playoff games. They have won divisions. They've been, you know, they've been competing in that upper level where the Lions have been knocking on the door with. Being real, like one game away from a division title, being in a playoff game but not winning, you know, like so we should be aspiring to get to that ne- next level. And then we, with the quarterback, then we should be able to jump that level. You're if, right. if, if your theory is correct, <laughs> it's a good theory. I mean, I, I you make a good point that even if you have that good defense. You know, you have a pretty solid office, offense, but you don't have that quarterback to get you. I mean, who was in the quarterback or who was in the Super Bowl last year? Yeah, Brady, Matt, right? Matt, Matt Brady. Brady, exactly. Before that, it's, it's Aaron Rodgers. You know, it's well. I mean, Russell Wilson. W- would you rather have Russell Wilson or Matt Stafford going forward the next five years? Oh, Matt Stafford, absolutely. But it, even though Russell Wilson is a Super Bowl champion. Yeah, but he had, I mean, he had a better team around him. But Russell Wilson is Russell Wilson's a, a quality quarterback. Do I think he's top ten? Eh, I don't know about top ten, but he, he's he's probably fourteen, fifteen, somewhere around there. And, and but it's still difficult to even get a quarterback like that. You know, I think even, he's even slightly than above average. Fourteen, fifteen. I think he's top ten, like you right there so? at ten. Yeah, 
I think because he's smart too. It's it's not about all of his ability. I think he's a smart quarterback as well. Um, gets rid of the ball quick. He can move around the pocket, throw the ball. Um, I think he's top ten quarterback for sure. I think I think Russell Wilson is more of a game manager type guy. Uh, I think the you know Seattle they obviously they've been uh, it's their defense that they've ridden. You know Marshawn Lynch. You know in their Super Bowl year. Uh, it's a, I didn't. I don't know if I think I'd rather have Stafford. Like going forward, I'd much going rather have now, Stafford. Yeah, right have Stafford. now, but like Wilson has something that Stafford doesn't have and may never have, and, and that's a ring. And so you can't you can't knock that because because Seattle didn't win the Super Bowl despite Russell Wilson being at quarterback. You know he wasn't. He, they won. They won a Super Bowl. They've been in huge games. They've won division titles, playoff games. They're, going to Seattle is one of the hardest places to go to go win. And Russell Wilson has a part to do with that. Now, if, if you traded places, if Matt Stafford was the quarterback of Seattle all these years, and R- Russell Wilson was the quarterback of the Lions. Do you think there's? Do you think anything would change, or, or do you think it, like the scenario would play out pretty much the same? I, I think Seattle might have had a better opportunity, to maybe win more than one Super Bowl. Uh, I think they probably beat New England. Russell Wilson didn't have exactly a great game um, against New England, but I, I, I don't know. I, I, I just think I think Stafford's worth it. I think it's worth the contract. I, I don't understand why people are frustrated and, and don't agree with signing him. I, I don't understand that. I don't understand why people don't want Stafford to to be here long term. It's the culture. I don't understand man. It, it. It, it. It's the culture, man. It, yeah, it, there's always going to be haters, no matter there's what. Not, Lions there's fans are so Brady. there's so many there's so many downtrod Lions fans, but they're still Lions fans. They still want to call in to the radio shows. They still want to talk about the Lions at the bar. They want to talk about the Lions on social media, but they're bitter and they're angry. And at, at every step, they they've learned they find a comfortableness in complaining. And I honestly fell into that in the first quarter, the first game. It felt comfortable to be mad at at these guys. You know who? And and that's. I was going to say, you know who Stafford reminds me of at this point in his career? Mike Vernon or Chris Osgood? Steve Eiserman. Steve Eiserman put up all these great stats. All all these great. He was breaking records and put up all these great stats, but he couldn't win. He couldn't win the you know big in the playoffs, yeah. and it got to the point where there was rumors of him being traded to Calgary. Yeah, I'll to, never forget that. To Ottawa, it was Ottawa. Oh, Ottawa. Yeah, Ottawa. Ottawa. yeah, Ottawa. Yeah, one of those crazy cold Canadian places. <laughs> but and yeah, then, it was, and then yeah. eventually, you know, it got to the point where he, he did change his Esmond did change his style a little bit, but he did win those cups. You know, he, yeah. he ended up winning four of them. You know, after a while. Yeah, now he's it, a legend. And now he's yeah. a legend. He's one of the, you know, greatest superstar stars in the history of Detroit sports. You know, but at a time, there was people saying, yeah, he can't win. Yeah. He can't win the big one. Let's trade him. Let's, 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 let's rebuild. Let's start over. And, and what if they would have done I thought that? You what if they would have traded Steve Eisenman? Because they always said, man, the, the two toughest yeah. uh, positions in Detroit sports are um, well, the, the, quarterback the, the reason goalie, I say that is. Quarterback And, like, who, like who, who's the everybody's favorite player in Detroit, the backup quarterback and the backup <laughs> goalie. You know? well, the reason I bring up, bring up Iserman is because he, he was the biggest superstar in Detroit yeah. at that time. Yep. And, and he could, he was looked at as not being able to win. Well, he also games. had the guy, you know, the bad boys, the Pistons. So, I mean, the the basketball and hockey were both real huge I'm around kind of, that I'm time. Kind of so at like, so yeah. fans were used to, to winning at that point. Yeah. They, you know, they, they, mm-hmm. they tasted that with the Pistons and – with the wings, they, there was, uh, there were, they, you know, you had the dead wings years, you know, for so long throughout the 80s where, you know, like a good game was Probert breaking somebody's nose, you know. <laughs> um, but, they, yeah, once the, the playoffs, you know, started coming around and it, it, they weren't winning, I, like, it, it's true. Like, Losing in the first it, round. It seemed like, yeah, you couldn't Toronto, get Toronto and then San Jose. Yeah, and it took know. time and time. I don't know, like, I'm sure – people realize but like Iceberg played for like 20 years 
you're right. Like those first ten years were not easy for him, and you're. I, I, he was. He was like this close to to getting traded. Like, like, like the papers were like close, like being signed, pre- pretty much, man. With the, with, but, you know, by the grace of God, it it, it didn't work out because we got a lot of great years, you know. Yeah. After uh, a lot of cups. After that, you know. A lot of Stanley Cups, a lot of great moments. I'm not saying Matt Stafford's going to win four Super Bowls, but I, I, I'm just saying that you did. You just said it. No, no. <laughs> Mark but it down. I, I, I think I think Matt Stafford will win a Super Bowl with the Detroit Lions in the next six years, I really, and he will be one of the greatest players to ever play in Detroit sports. Oh, he would if, if he if he lead and it, if, if well, if he wins the Super Bowl, yeah, he will. And if if he That's leads no them, you know, like if he's the guy that leads them to it, like he starts doing some Aaron Rodgers type, type stuff where he puts the team on his back at times and you know, he makes those remarkable like highlight live in your mind forever type playoff moments and then to get them over the hump and then they get to the, the Super Bowl. And then he has a big game. He'll he'll be the biggest sports legend in Detroit ever. You guys want some more Kool Aid or? You know what? You know what will happen. I mean, it did well. Like, no, no, you're I, right. I've with always that. said this. No, man. you're right. You could take you could take the Tigers, the Wings, and the Pistons. Have them all win a championship in the same season. Ball that up. Multiply it times ten, and you won't get close to what it will be. If the Lions do win the Super Bowl, because say I don't care what anybody says, this is a football town, and there's been so many people that have just lived and died with this team, and, and, and us fans have gone through so much. Being fans of this team, that that when it does happen, and and the bandwagoners are going to come out, they're going to come <laughs> they out. Always they're gonna come out. They always they're going to come out. They always their parade will be. I don't know. <laughs> Two million, three million people will be at that parade. That's that Lions Super Bowl parade. I guarantee it. You're guaranteeing a Super Bowl too. I'm guaranteeing it. It's amazing when it happens. <laughs> I, it could. I mean, it, it's, it's tough to predict. The Super Bowl. No, I, I, just gonna, I, I, I just think they're going to. I think they're going to win divisions. I think they're going to win. That's my job to harass you. Guys. Yeah. They're going to win <laughs> playoff games. When you guys games. just get too much of the Kool Aid, I got. I got to. You know, so I got to rash a little bit. If, if <laughs> I were to tell you in 2005 all the great players the Detroit Tigers were going to have and how close they were going to get, you would have figured, yeah, they'll win a World Series. Mm-hmm. And as great as team as they had, no, you're right. and as yeah. great as a run they had, they never got the World Series. And mm-hmm. they, they should have, you know, if you look back at the superstars they had. So it, it's tough to just predict a championship. No, I know. But I think he's going to take them to I, that level. Mm-hmm. If they get it, I, don't, I can't, that's tough to predict. But I do think that he's going to bring them to a Super Bowl team level. And it, hopefully they, they do... You know, and, it's, and it, again, it's so much more than just. I mean, this isn't basketball where Michael Jordan and some good supporting cast can carry you to greatness. I mean, this is a fifty-three man roster, um, and it, there's so many things have to go right for you to win a Super Bowl, or even just be great. Because there's only a handful of great teams that are consistently great, and. Obviously, the Lions are not one of them. So we're going to have to, like, punch it in, like, one year, you know, like, get that lucky year, you know, like like a Tampa Bay, you know, with a great defense. and or uh, We're going to have a great offense, I think, more than a great defense. Yeah, but I mean, like, but t- defense, but I think, I think Tampa I, it's Bay more had the right group. coach, the right defense, the right guy, the right players at the right yeah, time. Yeah, you just have to have everything they, come they, together. Like, every, yeah, that perfect yeah, storm. I know because, what you mean. Because we're not. Because you know, if you look back, who's won most of the Super Bowls lately? Like, teams with pedigrees, you know, Denver, Pittsburgh, New England, you know, Green Bay. One, they got one, you Seattle. know, but, but Seattle. Like, like these teams are the same. It's the same teams that are in it every year. It's, you know, like a Baltimore. At least they have a shot or, to win it. You know, Atlanta year. had them on the road. Atlanta should have won that Super Bowl last year. Don't um, you think but, the Lions are getting? Like, I think they're getting to, to that, that Atlanta level. point. They're not getting anywhere close to New England, Pittsburgh. No, I don't think they're going to sustain yeah. championships for Atlanta, yeah. the next 10 years. I, you know, but I think we, we are getting to that upper echelon where we're to be talked about year after year because 
we're young, but we're young in enough places, but we're we got veterans in the right places too. And then Bob Quinn is going to just continue to to build this team. And that's where it is. It, it It's not only my faith in Stafford, it's my faith in Bob Quinn. Yeah. I mean, he's already shown it with these drafts and, and free agent pickups. And, and, you know, your left tackle goes down, he goes and makes a trade for Greg Robinson. Greg Robinson's been, you know, adequate for now anyways. We, oh, he's been good. You know, yeah. so it, it, it's Bob Quinn that I, I have the trust in as well as Stafford. And I think over the next six years, Bob Quinn's going to be able to build a team around Stafford with, you know, within the salary cap despite – Stafford's contract. Yeah, and be because able to the, salary, guys the salary cap is going to go up. These quarterback contracts are going to go up. So, and then people are going to be paying more and more. Stafford's contract is going to, we, we talked about this at length before, but Stafford's contract right now, oh, he's the highest paid player, blah, blah, blah. Until next year. But it, yeah, <laughs> but the, like it, in five years from now, that contract is going to be really nice when the salary cap has risen and risen. And I think you're right. I think we're. I think. I think there's good times uh, ahead. I think. I think we're in a good place as Lions fans, where we can feel. We don't have to have that empty, hollow confidence. You know, wish in one hand, blank in the other, and see 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 which one you know <laughs> comes true first. Or whatever. I don't even know how that. Well, is. well, the two more. <laughs> but, but, but you know what I'm saying? Like, like we're just we're just we're just on hope and prayer, you know. And but really, it's just hollow confidence. I think we're like, we're starting to build a, a a dynamic here where we can be proud and and have expectations of yeah. success. It, it, the two most important positions on a football team are the general manager and the quarterback. And I think we all can sit here and say that we are confident in, in both Bob Quinn and Matt Stafford um, at those positions. And that's what gets me excited. That's what gives me confidence that this team will continue to take steps forward towards being one of the top teams in the NFC. And, and you look at the NFC, I, I think the NFC is a little bit um, less competitive than the, uh, the AFC. I think the AFC is a little bit tougher. W- would you guys agree with that? I yeah. would think so, yeah. yeah I would agree. For now, any, anyway, though, because we're seeing some teams, though, because – if you look at just week one, you are seeing some 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 shifting going on because some of these teams that were good that always a couple years ago, year. they, 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 you know, they're starting to get older, they're starting to break down. Where some of these teams that have been at the bottom, their draft picks are starting to come through. You know, some different things are happening, and I mean, so I, are the Lions part of this? Shift, I you know I, I hope so. I really think so. I think they are. I think the Lions are like, you know, the new blood, like a, a team that's going to be here and a team that uh, you know you're going to have to. If you're in the a- NFC, you know you're going to have to deal with us for a few years to come. But look, I think we. I think we're all in agreement that uh, week one was pretty freaking awesome. Man, football is here. Uh, college football, whoo, that's what we're getting into next. Ohio State went down on national TV at home. That big nut. Oh, God, I love seeing that guy, man. There's memes all across. The, the, go out on the Internet and just watch this dude just looking all like he's – Heartbroken, man. Oh, is that, is that, is that big nut? Is that you know the big guy with face? Yeah. He's oh, he's all over the internet today and yesterday, man. Like he's like he's basically the face of Ohio State Buckeye fans. And oh god, was that so much fun to watch? <laughs> I don't, I I hate to say it. I'm not sure if it's true or not. I maybe have to do some deep self uh, analyzing, but. I almost get more joy out of watching Ohio State lose than I do Michigan winning. Well, uh, is that is that a like psychological that. thing, or is that? Is there I think over wrong Cincinnati. <laughs> I think if it was a bigger game for Michigan, you probably wouldn't. Yeah, all right. Yeah. It's, if it was not as a big game, yeah. then yes, because I I love seeing them lose. Oh too. God, especially on their own home field in a huge game on Saturday night. Huge mm. number two versus number five. Oh, it's fun to watch. But we're gonna get into some college football when we come back. This is the Detroit Sports Sit Down.
Well, Michigan has already been scaring folks, especially defensively. Number eight team in the country taking on Cincinnati. Wilton Spate, touch that banner alongside your brother Jess. Early in the first, first and ten for Spate. That's the perfect time to go play action. Kakoa Crawford in stride, beautifully thrown 43-yard connection. Wolverines on top, 7-0. How about that defense? There was so much talk. They could not make up for all those departed seniors. Uh, let's forget about that talk. Tyree Cannell picks off Hayden Moore 28 yards the other way. Michigan on top, 17-7 at the break. In the third quarter, though, since he hanging around under new coach Luke Fickle, Hayden Moore keeps it, finds a seam, and Hayden Moore is all the way down to the Michigan 15 setup in the red zone. A couple of plays later, Khalil Lewis finds a soft spot in that Michigan defense. There are not many. The Bearcats are suddenly down by just three. Michigan needs a game breaker, and they find him in Grant Perry. Up the middle, Grant Perry has speed to burn. First Michigan touchdown since the first quarter. It is a 24-14 to lead, and let's go back to that defense. Why not? One more time, you're an opposing quarterback. You do not want to throw into traffic. Somebody's going to be there. This time it's LeVert Hill. Second pick six for Michigan. Wolverines going to win it 36-14 to improve to 2-0. and Let's hear from Wilton Spate, Jim Harbaugh. Yeah, we were, uh, we were able to uh, able to move the ball uh, there in the second half uh, a little bit better. We stuck to the plan, um, and, and and we just showed again that uh, sometimes drives don't go your way, and, and we're able to bounce back and, and uh, get better from it. It was a game where where um, mistakes were made, and that's a challenge for our team. What kind of the theme is we got to you know, we got to get ex we got to get experience. You know, we got to get experience playing. This guys, first time playing. Uh, here in the big house, first time, first time going through a week of school, and uh, gonna be patient, you know. We're gonna gonna coach them up, and and uh, long road ahead. But you can't get experience without getting ex without playing. So uh, that's that's kind of the theme. And there it is, Michigan 36, Cincinnati 14, first game of the year at the big house, and you got your home fans booing you. In the third quarter, uh, that's not good. <laughs> that is not that. That's not good. Uh, we got the win. Uh, I mean, the headline on ESPN's you know summary of the game: Wolverines look sluggish, and I think that's exactly what they look like. I, there's obviously some bright spots. The defense played great again. You know. We're running the ball like crazy. Ty Isaac is, yeah, is, like is a beast. He, he finds the hole. And he's back quick. back hundred yard games. Yeah, he has uh, taken hold. Like Harbaugh gave him a shot, and he's taken hold of it. Like all the talk going into the the, the season was uh, all about Chris Evans and um, Ty Isaac said no. <laughs> Yeah, no, I was gonna say. That I think I'm gonna go ahead and be the man. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, I mean, what else can you can you say about that? He's uh. He, he looks good, but overall, uh, it is not it is not what Michigan fans were looking for at all. Uh, you wanted to come out and dominate this team. You wanted w Wilton Spade to. He didn't throw any interceptions, but man, he did not look like a national championship quarterback. Seventeen for twenty nine, two hundred and twenty one yards and two touchdowns. So, so yeah, seventeen for twenty nine. It's not a good percentage. No, and it, there was mistakes. There was, you know, but overthrows again, missing wide open receivers. Fum, you know, uh, yeah, like timing issues on the one fumble. It's uh, it was sloppy, and I Wilton Spade just he he does not look like he like. It's like I I see now why there was quote unquote quarterback controversy going into the season because uh, Spade. A lot of this stuff was probably going on every day, and I think Harbaugh was hoping that at, by this point a lot of this stuff would have corrected itself, uh, but it hasn't. And then there's a lot of people now wondering, is it time for a change? Uh, there's not a lot of people high on O'Corn. He's had a couple chances and didn't capitalize. He doesn't look um, like he has an arm at all. Yeah, I think um, – People really want to see Brandon Peters. You know, I think there's people out there that even want to see the true freshman, um, you know, McCaffrey. 
somebody it, it, like it, it, it's almost at this point like anybody but Wilton Spate. Except for O'Corn, <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> this neither so, of those two guys. Yeah, so it's like, it's like, what, what are you gonna get? You know, like yeah, those guys aren't ready. I, I, yeah, I mean, I trust Jim Harbaugh when it comes to quarterbacks, and I, I trust Jim Harbaugh in terms of just as a head coach in general. He, he he's not gonna put those guys out if they're not ready. But at what point, the, like, at, at what point do you weigh the I trust Jim Har- Harbaugh versus? If we have all these quarterbacks and and Wilton Spade is the best we got, what is going on? Because this isn't working. He he doesn't. Look, I'll say it again. He doesn't look like a national championship quarterback. So should we just expect a three or four loss season and hope that um, start hoping for next year already? No, they're two and zero. They got a fantastic <laughs> defense, and and in this game, he, they got to cut down on the turnovers. At least he didn't throw any interceptions, yeah, he didn't throw any interceptions. Um, or any yeah. pick sixes that you know really cost him. But still, you know, you, you talk about the fumbles. You know, they still affect you. And and this, in just order for this team, passes. To, yeah, like just, just missing just overthrows, guys. missed opportunities. You know, and he like he said it himself, where like it's. Sometimes he crosses up his footwork and, and it, it, it it affects the way he passes the ball or whatever. And at what point does that get corrected? Because if you know it's wrong, why can't you correct it? I know it, yeah. you got to. It's different when you're out there in yeah. the game. But if if he knows what it is, at least it's in the right direction. Maybe he can correct it and start making those long throws because it is about a lot of setting your feet when you get the you know when you have to go down the field far setting your feet. So maybe he does know his issue and maybe he can solve it. But I was really looking forward to him stepping up this game and, you know, actually playing a good game at, uh, against a weaker team. Yeah. But he didn't do that. And and last week I said I really think he's going to be elite quarterback, but uh, college quarterback, obviously. But I don't know. I mean, I thought he was really going to step up this week. It's time to start wondering. It really is because um... – you can't make those mistakes on the road at Penn State. Uh, Michigan State, we're going to talk about them in a minute, but Michigan State is starting to look like a, like they have a for real Big Ten defense. Like You can't make these types of mistakes. Your quarterback needs to be like sharp if you're going to make it through this Big Ten East. And... Uh, it, you would think at this point in in year three, with, with Coach Harbaugh being the quarterback guru, that the quarterback position should should be one of the least of our problems, and it seems to be quite possibly the biggest problem right now. It, it's concerning, you know. It, it's really concerning, but it, we'll see. We'll see what happens going into next week against Air Force. I mean, he has to have a good performance. Because if he struggles again, this talk is just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger around you know, around the whole campus of you know this quarterback controversy is, is fate the and guy. The nation because Harbaugh, everything he does gets talked about, and he's the quarterback guru. And if if, if, if fate start if con- continues to not become elite, then these questions are going to be coming nationally this and because michigan they're right there where you know just jumped up to number seven today number seven team in the country and um we're going to be talked about and we should go out there and spank air force and then what i think i think it's uh I don't know, know the schedule by hand, but I think it's indiana or purdue or illinois like, it's purdue. there's a few teams that we should beat in a row until it really starts coming down. Like you got Michigan State on October seventh. You got Wisconsin. You know, you're talking Wisconsin, Penn State, Ohio State. Like, I don't see Wilton Spade the way he looks right now. I, I, he could lose these games for us if he plays the way he's playing, and that's going to be so frustrating to watch. Another frustrating thing is you saw Shane Morris 
yeah. over to Central Michigan. I was wondering how many people big would time wonder numbers, about that. You know, just going off. Now that was against uh, can but that was on the road against uh, Kansas. And uh, yeah, he he just went nuts. Oh, f- what four hundred yards? How many done? Five touchdowns, yeah, something, something like that. Like that. Yeah, like he just game. went nuts. And that is, you wonder about that. You wonder if we let the wrong guy leave, you know. <clears throat> but, um, you know, we're 2-0. We got the win. And then the team just up the road, uh, up in East Lansing, uh, it looks like they're alive. They are alive. They, I told they, you they, they weren't going are, away. They, they, they are here. Now, uh, two MAC teams. It, it's funny because you can say, oh, they just beat two MAC teams. But one of those teams was in a top bowl game last year, undefeated throughout the whole season and it, last year. And then this year, in game one, went all the way to USC and ran the heck out of the ball over 200 yards rushing and took them down to the wire. And we talked about last week. I really thought that Western had a chance to come out and win this game. And despite the score of 28-14, to 14, the game was never really in jeopardy because the Michigan State defense just shut down Western. I mean, I mean, pretty much completely. The two touchdowns were, uh, a, what is it, a fumble return and a 100-yard kickoff return. By the same dude, what, what, Darius Phillips. I, th- I think his name was, man, that kid. I'm trying to pull it up right now. I don't yeah. know why I'm having such a hard time finding it. Yeah. Um, he he was pretty much a one-man show out there. But but the Michigan State defense, they look stout. Uh, you know, a real te- – they get – it's it's, it's nice for, for them. They get a whole week off. They, they got a, a bye week. You know, they're not playing um, – I wonder why there isn't a game it's scheduled. Weird. Yeah, this should this be. early. But they're taking a bye week, you know, and uh, Notre Dame is coming to town. A Notre Dame team that beat Temple week one, but um, played a tough game against Georgia. And uh, you found that? Yeah, that's why I hate, <laughs> I hate when I did actually find it right then, and then the website played a video or something. I had to click it off. Gosh, yeah, I hate but, this. That's why I liked looking for it before. Georgia came in and knocked off Notre Dame in a NBC primetime. Felt like Saturday a neutral Night site showdown. game because of <laughs> like, so many Georgia fans yeah. in Notre Dame. Georgia was evacuated for the hurricane, and they all went to Notre Dame yeah, Stadium. Sure, <laughs> That's all meet. It's like the, That's the a good idea. The evacuation. Okay, we're all going to meet up here. And it just so happened to be <laughs> a game there, in South no. Bend, Indiana. <laughs> They all did, but hey, God bless them because uh, they 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 showed up in numbers and they cheered their team on to a great win. Um, and it's I love watching Notre Dame lose. Not yeah. as much as uh, not as yeah that's Ohio, State. As Ohio State. How much did you guys love seeing uh, Oklahoma's quarterback Baker Mayfield just plant that <laughs> OU flag in the middle of? of uh, <laughs> The Ohio field. It was pretty sweet. Yeah, I like seeing that. The too. only thing that kind of sucked about it is it, it's it's not it's artificial turf. It's not grass, so he couldn't plant it. He just stuck it, and then it just fell over. <laughs> <laughs> but it was still the whole idea of it was it was yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. Now, do you think he should have apologized? For no, because I don't think he's sorry in the least bit. He, I'm sure it was you know Oklahoma PR saying you got to go out and apologize. We don't, you know. That's why it's so dumb. Everybody has to apologize, even though they don't want to. Yeah, <laughs> no, absolutely. He is not yeah, apologetic at to. all about what he did. He would it, go out and do it again. Because hey, it's not like Ohio State just uh, said you know lined up and shook hands and said great game last year when they when they took out Oklahoma on their field. You know, I don't remember if there was a flag planted, but I'm sure, I'm sure it wasn't pleasant to be to lose to them. Yeah. To lose, to <laughs> yeah. They have to deal with all that. Yeah, for um, sure. So I think we know just, how Ohio State is. Oh so yeah, I'm sure it wasn't no. at all. Yeah, we've we've all heard the stories. We've all seen it. Is there is there nothing better than than seeing that? Um, 
Yeah, if Michigan wins and yeah. Michigan State loses, it's a good day. Yeah, it sure is. And, and State. Ohio State, yeah. With Ohio State, man, with that guy. I, I, they call him, like, the, what is it, the, the big nut or something, the buck nut. I, I don't know. The, the the big dude where he paints his face red and silver. And he's, he's like the face of Ohio State. And, uh, it's so it's so much fun to see him all, like, just downtrodden, you know, and then all, <laughs> all the memes that come out. And it, it, it was a fun it's been a fun couple of days on social media with the with all the Ohio State haters. What do you guys think about JT Barrett? I mean, it he's just seems fall- like he just keeps falling off and yeah. falling off. And I mean, he had such a great year. What was it, twenty fourteen, where he had a great year? Yeah. I mean, before he broke, they his had leg. the three the three dynamic quarterbacks, and he won out over all three of them. Was it Braxton Miller, JT Barrett, and then mm-hmm. Cardell Jones? Cardell and, Jones and, and he's yeah. the one that really like shined. You know, like. Of all, they moved Bra- he he was so good that they moved Braxton Miller to to wide receiver. Yeah, and um, I thought he would take off this. And he too. just had so you, you just wonder like, is he just is he getting hit too much? Is he is he getting tired? Is there personal stuff going on? Like you never and just guys athletes. I mean, sometimes they just fade away too. I mean, you know, some people just think. I think what it is. Some players just think they're too good and they don't learn more and more and more. Some people actually study. And get better. I think I've noticed that when in hockey, when I used to coach and teach, some kids want to learn, want to get better, and some kids just are already good, and they don't care because they've always been good. So yeah. I, you know, it could be that that he's just not studying, make wants to make it to the next level. See, wants I don't. To be great. I think with uh, if, if you come to play for Urban Meyer, you should. This is the guy who coached Tim Tebow. You know, mm-hmm. I think uh, I don't think you're gonna get. I mean, you you yeah. You'll run into those types of players, but I don't think at quarterback. I don't think JT Barrett. I don't think that's in his makeup. I, I don't think it's just idea. I, I I hear what you're saying. I just I don't I, I don't think I I think it's just maybe just not that good. Like like every all the right pieces were around and everything was in place that year for him, and now things are different. The, the the same playmakers out there. The offensive line isn't that good. I mean, gosh, T- Taylor Decker was there, you know. Yeah. And we know how important he is to the Lions' offensive line. Mm-hmm. So, all right, so maybe and it's the, just the defenses start game game planning for him better. Yeah. And, you know, and and it, maybe that injury you know, affected him too. You know, he just hasn't been the same since that injury yep. you know, at the end mm-hmm. of that year. You know, against Michigan. Yeah. So it happens, um, you know. I you never want to see a young man's career get derailed, but if it has to, hey, screw you, Ohio State. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so be it, man. Better you than anybody else. Because <laughs> I did. I I love seeing those guys lose, and um, and I, I it it gives me a lot of hope. Going down that Ohio State is not this runaway freight train of just dynamic football uh they really show their colors they show their colors in the first half of the indiana game last week and um oklahoma is obviously a much better team than indiana and they came in and because that game was close too i for the first what two and a half quarters talk about the indiana game well oh the oklahoma game the Oh yeah, the Oklahoma game with Ohio State was was close. I mean, they're they're both. The, Ohio State has played like two solid halves out of two games. Like the first half of the Indiana game was not good for them, and they looked exposed. And then the second half of of Saturday's game, they got exposed again. And maybe um, this. Could be the year where we can catch them. You know, we got them at home, and there really shouldn't be too many excuses unless we don't figure out what's going on at the quarterback position. Because I think the run game is strong. Uh, we got weapons um, at the wide receiver position. Special teams is, is great. Our kicker, you know, I can see why Jim Harbaugh went to go spend the night at his house. Now, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, <laughs> he, and the defense. I mean, from from front to back is is looking strong. They're playmakers. They they get it done. You you can't run the ball on these guys, and 
when you do start just chucking it up there, we got playmakers in in the secondary, and our linebackers are coming hit hit you too. So, Sean Gary looked like a beast. He's starting to look like a man among boys out there. Yeah. He's starting to really come into his own. Um, I think he's got to watch himself. Um, because his job is to get the quarterback, but you really there's such a small window when you're going to get get the quarterback. Uh, he definitely needs to learn how to control himself. Because uh, you don't want to see those targeting penalties. You don't want to see those roughing the passers. Uh, you don't because he's not the. We can't lose him for games at a time because he's helmet to helmet with the quarterback. You know. Yeah, um, I like it, but um, that comes with time, you know. He'll he'll learn that. He's just being aggressive, and that's yeah. good to a point. So, what do you guys think? We got all right. So Michigan is going to play Air Force this weekend at home, noon start. Uh, not a lot of excitement. They. Do you think that there's something said for like how hyped up and how built up the first game was, and that maybe there was a maybe an emotional letdown? letdown? Absolutely. It, it. I mean, shouldn't Harbaugh be able to get the team above that, or is that just such a natural thing that it, it's hard to get get past? I, I think it's a natural thing. You, you see your 35 point favorites. You're at home. You're expected to completely dominate. You just you just went out to Dallas and play, you know played an incredible game against Florida. I think it's just a natural letdown. I mean, there's it, 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 no real way to avoid it. But it is a wake-up call. And, and Harbaugh, you know Harbaugh's going to use this. as a, You know, like, hey, look, you can't have letdowns like this, no matter who you're playing. And, and, and anybody should that's associated with Michigan should remember, you know, it doesn't matter who you're playing. They, they lost to Appalachian State with one of the best rosters they've ever had. Yeah. You know, Chad Henney, and Mike Hart, and Manningham, and all those guys. And they lost to Appalachian State. So, you cannot take any team lightly in college football because on any given Saturday, a team can jump up and bite you. And Cincinnati hung with them for a while. You yeah. know, I mean the They're defense the defense took over eventually, but 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 Cincinnati did hang with them. So it, it, I would like to see Michigan come out and really make a statement against Air Force and just put the beat down on them. And, and we we got to see Spate step up and have a big game. Um, if he struggles again. You just don't want to see these talks, but you just don't want a quarterback controversy with a team that's of this quality. Yeah. And and, and staying with the Big Ten, you know, you t- you talked about you know Ohio State's not this freight train coming at you, but a team that might be is Penn State oh, returning yeah, as yeah. Big Ten champions. And Pitt played them tough. They 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 had a tough game, um, but they they still they look good. They're going to be hard to beat. They're going to be real hard to beat at night at home. On, on a, what's probably going to be just a incredible a- atmosphere. I, I mean, you're talking national team. Hopefully, both teams are undefeated going into that. You know, it's going to be a top, possibly a top five game, at least a top ten game, and that's going to be a place where Wilton Spike can ha- ha- would have to be mistake free. I'm already looking forward to it. Yeah, <laughs> it's down the line. You know, but before that is Michigan State, and I do want to want to talk about them. They, I mean, because they did look good. Um, like I said, two Mac, they beat two Mac teams, but it's not not your just your ordinary Mac team is Western, and I mean they shut them down. And are you are you seeing a um, a higher confidence level from this team now? Do you think D'Antonio has found a way to? Get past all the ugliness of last year and in this past off season, and like get these guys believing in themselves and taking on like a me against the world type of situation, us against the world. I think that's definitely part of it, and I think they've they found their kind of swagger on defense again. But we'll, I mean, like you said, it's two MAC teams. We'll see, you know, not you know, in two weeks against Notre Dame. That's the real measuring test, you know, measuring stick, where this team is at. If they can go out and beat Notre Dame and look impressive, then you're really talking about Michigan State being back. And for Michigan, you know, as, as Michigan fans, that, that worries you a little bit because, man, it's, it's just another team you're going to have to deal with, you know, in the Big Ten East. And, and, and But in another sense, it's going to make it fun. I yeah, mean, that's it what I It makes it exciting. 
You know, it's just more exciting, it's big just, matchups. Yeah, slugfest because Michigan State's going to play Ohio State. Michigan State's going to play Penn State. Penn State's, you know, got to play Ohio State. Like It's just going to be this brawl, <laughs> basically, yeah, exactly. when, when things come down to it. And it's like, you know, the best team will be left standing. And then they're going to have to go play Wisconsin, <laughs> most likely, who <laughs> – Looks like a freight train themselves, man. They're running the ball like Wisconsin runs the ball. They they're playing defense. And I didn't realize State had two hundred and ninety six rushing yards. Yeah, they yeah. <laughs> I knew they ran a lot, but, but not Werke that much. had that sixty one yard yeah. touchdown run, man. Uh, he looks good. He looks he, he looks like they look like they found a quarterback, that's for sure. Uh-huh. I'm more I, I honestly I I'm more confident in Lewerke than I than I am Wilton Spade right now. He um, had two touchdowns rushing, eighty one yards and 161, a touchdown and an interception. Yeah. 13 for 21, so he didn't throw very much, but if you're running 300 yards, you don't need to. You can run, yeah. Yeah. Work, you can move, that's for sure. Well, that's where where it's at, man. We got got some good football ahead of us, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Michigan's 2-0, Michigan State's 2-0. Michigan's got Air Air Force at home next week. Should be... uh, should, should be, be an one. easy win, right? <laughs> I mean, it should be. It should be. I know Air Force. They, you know, they they've always had kind of a gimmicky offense. Could out, you know, type of team that could come out and and, and get you. At you least know? give you like, a tough battle. Yeah, you know, those guys are gonna be tough if if, if anything, man. Oh, yeah. You know, like, <laughs> just a bunch of tough dudes out there punching you in the face. Exactly. But for this week, that's gonna be the end of it. The Detroit Sports Sit Down. That's what you've been listening to, and I really do hope you enjoyed it. Listen, y'all. If you ever want to get a hold of us, we're out here. We're on Twitter at Det Sports E N T. That's D E T S P O R T S E N T. That's for Twitter. We're on Facebook. You can find us, Detroit Sports and Entertainment. We're all over the place. We're always posting. We're talking. You're talking. We're getting at each other. It's a lot of fun. These podcasts, you can find them on Podbean. All you got to do is look for Detroit Sports Sit Down. Podbean.com. You can get this podcast just sent directly to your phone and your computer. By going on to iTunes, all you got to do is search the Detroit Sports Sit-Down. We're on the World Wide Web at DetroitSportsAndEntertainment.com. And if you want to get at us through email, we're at DetroitSportsSitDown at gmail.com. There's a lot to look forward to because college football is coming, man. Football is coming, baby, and we're going to be talking about it, so... Get with us, get at us. And what we're going to do now is leave you with some of the greatest sports moments in Detroit history. Have a good night, y'all.